Hi there and welcome to Sam's Russian Adventures. My name's Sam and today's video is going to be a little bit different. I want to talk about why I'm scared and why I'm frightened to speak the truth about Russia. And this is a topic that I haven't covered before, something I've really wanted to cover, something I discuss a lot in comments with people and something I discuss an awful lot with fellow YouTubers. So this is going to be a completely different type of video and something that hopefully you're going to find interesting. I've got to be very brave to make this kind of video. And a lot of people are praised on YouTube for being brave. But I think that a lot of YouTubers are in fact not brave. What they do, especially this uh, English speaking community that makes YouTube videos about Russia, for the English speaking audience that don't live in Russia. I think a lot of YouTubers are not brave at all. I think a lot of YouTubers just follow the grain because they know the proven way to get results, to get views. And at the end of the day, when you make content that follows the grain, that follows what YouTube wants, it gets you the views, it picks up the subscribers, it grows your YouTube channel and essentially you make money and you have the whole world praising you for how amazing videos you're making, how brave you are for doing the things you do. Now, you, if you're a follower of my channel, then you see that I make content about life in Russia, right? And you'll see the, the latest probably 10, 15 videos I've put an awful lot of work into those videos. I've been interviewing people about different topics with relation to life in Russia. I spend a lot of time creating the videos. I then edit all the videos. I then translate them all into English for the audience. Now, would you consider this being brave? I guess not, right? You'd think being brave would be making a video saying that everything in Russia is really bad because you think that, well most people I should say, think that by making a video about everything in Russia being bad, well then you're risking your life by doing it or something, you're risking prison sentence or something like that, right, for being negative towards Russia. And so if I was to make a video saying that everything in Russia is bad, just a video like this with me in the camera that'll literally take 10 minutes to create and quickly upload, then I could get a million views, right? And everyone will be supporting me, telling me, well done, you know, you're such a brave person for speaking out against Russia, you know, and, and telling us the truth. And you'll get worldwide recognition and everybody will be telling you how great and amazing you are for standing up and doing that. Well, I'd like to talk a little bit about this whole topic because I find it hilarious, as do most content creators who create content about Russia in the English language. What you're probably not aware of is there's about maximum, I'd say, 50 content creators that are creating this content in English for a Western audience about life in Russia. And most of us communicate. We talk to each other, we're aware of the trends, we're aware of the different topics that people want to make videos about and uh, we communicate and what it comes down to it comes down to your conscience against money that's what it comes down to conscience versus money how much are you prepared to feel guilty and feel bad about the content you create compared to the amount of money you can make. Because the most negative content that you create about Russia, the more money you can potentially create on, make on YouTube. That's just how it works. And um, most content creators that make content about Russia, what they did if they started a few years ago, they would start off by making content about places like this where I'm at now, going into maybe a food market, testing foods or, uh, you know, showing uh, around a certain area or a particular park that they like and stuff like that. And they soon realize that they don't get views for that. And maybe accidentally or maybe on purpose, they'll create a video that's negative about Russia and they get loads of views. The channel will grow and they'll think, oh wow, okay, so I know what to do to get views, but I don't feel good within myself for making that content, right? I feel guilty because I know it's a lie. 
I know it's maybe highlighting something negative and I'm getting views. So they go back to creating content which is nice about Russia, which talks about their life, how much they like Russia, the people they meet, how friendly everybody is, uh, some great things about Russia, and they don't get views again. And so they think, well, what do I do here? This is like a difficult situation because I've understood now that the way to get views on YouTube is to make videos that portray Russia negatively because that's what the Western audience are looking for. That's what the content is that YouTube wants to promote. YouTube wants to promote content which shows Russia badly. At the end of the day, YouTube is not a Russian platform. It's a platform from another country. And so they, therefore they want to show content which is not showing Russia in a positive light. So at that moment, YouTubers are stuck. And we talk about this a lot. We talk about, you know, people say to me, I'm going to this show and I'd really like to film and it'd be really good, but I'm not going to get any views. So what if I pretend the shopping mall is empty and film something about how bad it is and empty it is there and I get 50,000 views and I pick up 500 subscribers. And the people making this content are aware of this. And it's all about the balance of how negative are you prepared to go compared to the, the feeling that you're going to have the guilt on your conscience. That's what it's about. And if you can create content which is kind of negative about Russia, that's not going to make you feel really bad, that you can explain your way in front of other content creators and you can say, well, you know, I know it's misleading and it's, it's not truthful, but it's the only way to make content that's going to get me views, you know? And um, as long as you can uh, live with the, the guilt of creating content which is kind of negative, but not really negative, then you can balance that out by getting views and getting subscribers. And there's other people that will go a lot further. There's people that also maybe made content by accident was negatively and realize, whoa, if I go really negative, if I'm really awful about Russia and I just say everything is really depressing, everything is really bad, and just talk about all the negative aspects about life in Russia, because at the end of the day, this is what the audience, the audience is looking for, right? This is what people are searching for. If you make content about how bad everything is, then you're going to be praised by the audience. They're going to say you're so brave for doing this. It's, you know, it's so good that you're prepared to risk your life to make this content that that's what they believe right and so therefore your channel is going to grow so much and a lot of youtubers that have started making, making content since within the last half year they're aware of that straight away they don't start with the trying to show good content they show negative content from the word go right and their channels grow like whoa you know, make one or two videos that are already like 10,000 subscribers because they're making that negative content. So my topic for today is how brave is it to make content that we're just sitting here, speaking to the camera, making a quick video and saying how bad Russia is and getting loads of views compared to actually creating content that takes time to create where you speak to people, you meet people, you show the real side of Russia and then you go against the grain you go against what it is YouTube wants. You go against what it is that the viewers want. You go against all of that because you're just showing honestly what Russia is like. So I've made a few notes that I want to come back to so that I can just cover all the topics, right? So these are the main points that I want to highlight when it comes to brave or not brave, right? So if you make content that shows Russia as it is, not as this horrible place that they show on the news and that some of these YouTubers show, right? But you show it as it is, then the first point you get labeled as propaganda. You're propaganda, you work for the government, you're getting paid by the KGB, you're a Putin troll, you are uh, all these things, you get all these comments and just loads of hate. Whereas if you make content that shows that Russia is really bad, you get praised, you get praised by everyone, right? Oh, well done, you're so brave for showing real life and for standing up. So it's really weird because if you show real life, you get blamed for being propaganda. If you fake it and show that everything's bad, then you get praised for showing real life. Um, the second point is you get labeled anti wherever you're from. So if you're showing Russia as a positive place, then you are, you're anti UK, you're anti America, you're uh, showing stuff that's pro Russia, you're, you know, again, the same kind of mindset as what we talked about in the first point. The next thing is labeled fake news. If you show pro-Russian content or Russian content that shows Russia in a positive light in any way, shape or form, then you're 
fake news because that's how it works now. YouTube has the new rules about fake news, right? If it's pro-Russian, it's fake news, you get banned. If it's pro-Russian, it's fake news, you get demonetized. If uh, it's pro-Russian in any type of news uh, on the TV, right, the channel gets banned. The only news that's allowed is news that's anti-Russian. That's allowed, that's promoted, and that's welcomed by everybody. So is it brave to continue creating anti-Russian news or is it brave to stand out and to say I'm going to make honest content that isn't going to burden my conscience. Obviously one of the risks about creating this kind of content is being demonetized and having your channel taken down. Now at the moment I don't make any money from YouTube at all. Um, you know I haven't been four years in and I'm not making any money from YouTube simply because you know no one wants to hear truth about Russia. They just want to see the negative. It's simple as that. Another thing that I found that is really interesting about people that do interviews in Russia. So there's quite a few channels that go out there and do interviews trying to get uh, some sort of reaction from the people they interview. So they interview people with really negative questions, right? And then they can't really lose with the answers. So if someone answers, no, that's a complete lie, that's ridiculous, then the viewers think he's been brainwashed. If the person answers with the answer that they want to hear, they're like, well done, brave, well done for speaking out. And it's just ridiculous. So there's only one viewpoint that's accepted. And that is the viewpoint of, it's got to be bad, it's negative, you've got to agree with what we've decided Russia is like. And if you don't, then you're just brainwashed. You've fallen for the propaganda. People say, I've fallen for the propaganda. I don't watch state TV at all. The only TV I ever watch is when there's like a football match on. I watch English speaking news. But yet I've fallen for state propaganda because anybody who says or shows Russia as it is, which you can see from my videos. If you watch my videos, you will see Russia as it is. But people don't want to watch that. And YouTube doesn't want to show that because that shows Russia as a normal country. And Russia isn't allowed to be a normal country. Russia's got to be a horrible place. Unfortunately, that's how it is. So anyway, I'm really glad that I just got those thoughts and just stuff off my chest because it's been annoying me for a long time. If you like my channel, subscribe, make sure you hit the like button, it'll really help me. Share it with your friends if you found it interesting and let me know what you think about it in the comments. At the end of the day, the statistics prove that people are more interested in content which portrays Russia negatively. That's just how it is. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments, but please don't make political statements. I really can't be bothered to read that stuff. Uh, you know, I've got loads of friends that live in all different countries around the world and their countries are involved with conflicts, but I don't write to them on their blogs with comments about, you know, political stuff. I just don't, don't, just don't do that because why would I?